Hebrews chapter 11 is commonly referred to as the chapter of faith. And many people are mentioned in this chapter, and they're referred to as the hall of faith. And the entire chapter deals with what happens when you put faith in the Lord. Can I say a lot of things is called faith that really isn't faith. Verse number 1 tells us what faith is. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. If you can look at it and figure it out, it's not faith. It's logic. But when you can see no way, but you believe God's going to make a way, that's faith. And the Bible says, So then faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Our faith in the Lord is determined by how much of the Word of God we've actually not only read, but believed and hid in our heart. That's what grows our faith. You know, it's through faith and through the Word of God we know that God framed the worlds. I don't need to listen to what Darwin had to say. I know what the Lord said. And so I, I don't have to... I don't have to wonder about certain things because I've seen what God said about it and He's put it in my heart and I have faith on it. Now verse 6 is instrumental as well. It says, But without faith it's impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. it do us some good if we'd ever learn that without faith we can't please God. Because when we're not looking through eyes of faith and we're trusting our own logic or intellect or ability, we're trusting in us and not God. And God's displeased with that until we trust in Him. I'm interested in verse 7 tonight. The Bible says, By faith Noah, <clears throat> being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark, to the saving of his house, um, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for the way of faith. Lord, the way of faith includes everybody. You don't have to be rich to, be, to have faith. But Lord, those that have faith are rich. Lord, you don't have to be greatly intelligent to have faith. But those that have faith are much more intelligent than folks that have degrees behind their name. God, thank you for the faith way. Lord, we're saved by grace through faith. And God, we thank you for making a way where even somebody such as I could be saved. Now, Lord, we've enjoyed all the good singing. We've enjoyed the good testimonies, the good fellowship with thy people. Lord, you're a good God. It's always good to enjoy being assembled with your people and worshiping you in spirit and in truth. Now, Father, I pray you'd help us tonight. Be with those that are working with the teens on the other side of the building there. God bless their efforts. And I pray that you would insulate those young people and help them for all that they face in this world. God, I pray that you'd increase their faith. Lord, I pray for anybody there or anybody in here this evening unsaved that tonight would be the night of their salvation. Help your people send revival to our hearts these days. We'll bless you for it, for it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen and amen. I want you to notice some things from verse 7 here. I want you to notice, first of all, that Noah heard the message. Look what it says. By faith, Noah, being warned... Of God of things not seen as yet moved with fear. We find that he heard the message. When, can I say this? The Bible says that in the last days there be a famine for the hearing of the word of God. As we sit here tonight, there's more preaching available than there's ever been through the internet and through uh, 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 things that uh, uh, now that we do in streaming and a lot of things, there are avenues even on your phone that you can hear preaching that even a decade ago you wouldn't have had access to. Uh, there's no shortage of preaching. 
And can I say there's no shortage of good preaching? Sometimes we get to thinking, well, only our stripe is the only ones doing Hey, God's got preachers all over this world preaching the gospel uh, and doing a work for God. Uh, uh, there's no shortage of what God's doing through the Word of God, but there is a famine for the hearing of what God's saying. Even God's people have gotten so used to preaching, we don't hear preaching. It amazes me, I don't know why it does, but it amazes me, we got some folks that are new to the church, like the Pierces, and, and if you talk to Brother Ed and Miss Kay, they thought, boy, we didn't know churches like this existed in this part of the country, and they loved the preaching. But some of you have been sitting here 20 years ago, or for 20 years now, you think, well, what's the big deal? There's a difference. Huh? You know, some of you can't wait till the preacher gets done, so you can go on with your other events and you wonder, why does Brother Doug enjoy going and preaching some of those meetings? Because them folks stay there all night because they're not used to it. There's a difference. Uh, hey, Miss Sydney went to the UK game yesterday and ran into a preacher that knew me. Uh, but yet, we've gotten used to it. It doesn't impact us anymore. Noah heard the message. I wonder, have you heard the message? Have you heard what God's been trying to do? Can I say what God's been trying to do the last few weeks? God's trying to save people. And He's trying to get us in a position to have a burden to see people saved. Have you heard the message? You should have been tore up today hearing a message on hell and not seeing anybody walk, walk an aisle and trust Christ. You should never be satisfied leaving the house of God without seeing folks get help. Hmm? I wonder, have you heard the message? Noah heard the message. But he not only heard it, Noah heeded the message. Look what it says. By faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, uh, by which he condemned the world. We find that he not only heard the message, he heeded, he did something with it. Can I say that Noah moved with fear on the message. Uh, God told him he, he was going to send it uh, a rain, and he was going to destroy the world by water. He was going to cause it to rain. Now, can I say, nobody had ever seen rain. God had watered the earth with the dew of the morning. All the vegetation was watered by God with the dew. It had never rained. Uh, and here uh, God said, Noah, I'm going to cause it to rain. No didn't say, I've never seen rain, so I don't believe it. Uh, no, God, uh, Noah said, I'm just going to believe God. Uh, regardless of this thing being bigger than anything I've ever seen, uh, I'm just going to trust God. Uh, listen, uh, I've never experienced the rapture, but I believe it's going to happen. Uh, and I'm uh, looking for it to happen. Uh, hey, uh, I, I've never seen uh, 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 crystal rivers and golden streets and walls of jasper and gates of pearl, uh, but I believe that I'm going to, and I'm uh, looking for that because uh, uh, that's what God's outlined. Uh, seeing isn't believing. No. Can I say the hand is quicker than the eye? Thinking you've got to see it to believe it, you'll die and go to hell or you'll miss out on God and what He's doing. Seeing's not believing. Trusting is believing. Hmm? He moved with fear. Now notice what heeding the message caused him to do. First of all, it caused him uh, to work. He said he built an ark. He prepared an ark. He went to work. It took him 120 years. And I mean, it was hard work. You understand, he not only had to chop down the trees he's going to build the ark with, but he also had to plant more trees uh, that, uh, you know, 50 years from now, he'd have trees to cut down. You understand, it was a lot more than just showing up and uh, going to Home Depot and getting what he needed. There was a lot of preparation. He went to work. You do know he had to build the scaffolding systems, and you know he had to uh, uh, understand how to make dial rods and make those as nails, and he had to uh, uh, understand how to make pitch and pitch it within and without. I mean, there was a lot of work. work. Uh, had to go get uh, gopher wood. And by the way, uh, uh, they've never found that kind of wood ever again. Mm -mm. You say, well, how do you know it existed? Because God said it did. Hmm? 
All I'm saying is it took a lot of work. And he went to work. Can I say nothing worth having comes easy? Can I say if we're going to have revival, it's going to take work. It's going to take a lot of prayer, a lot of seeking God's face. If we're going to see folks saved, it's going to take work. Can I say people in this world have seen enough out of churches, they don't want to have anything to do with church. And now they've seen enough out of the feel-good churches. You know, feel-good churches come wrong, you know, about 15 years ago and say, we're a church not like Grandma's church. You know, come as you are, leave as you are, is what they really are. Uh, they, they, they've tried everything. And, and I don't know what got into Southern Baptist churches in this area that have done away with the pulpits and gotten rock bands, and, and they're trying to compete with the feel-good church. All they're doing is alienating their members that like to sing out of hymn books uh, and like to hear preaching uh, and like to hear uh, uh, things about Jesus. They're alienating that crowd. And by the way, that's the crowd that paid for the building that they're in. But uh, all the feel-good churches, they've seen all that they, they need to see out of that. Do you know that the average feel-good church like the vineyard up here, they only keep their congregation about a year. Nine months to a year, they turn it over. Because what people do, they get in there, and you only hear so much stairway to heaven. It doesn't satisfy your soul. And after the energy of the flesh wears off, because it does appeal to their flesh, but after it wears off, they think there's nothing to this, and they go on down the road. They've seen enough out of TV preachers. They've seen enough out of uh, uh, people that leave church and go to the restaurants or go to the shopping malls uh, and hear them complain and whine and moan. Uh, they see the same thing on the job the next day. Uh, uh, they don't see folks excited they were in church on Sunday. Uh, and they've seen enough of this world uh, uh, of religion to say there's nothing to it. Uh, and if we're going to see them saved, it's going to take work. Uh, uh, we're going to have to pray like we've never prayed. Uh, we're going to have to get full of God like we've never been full of God before. Uh, we're going to have to show them uh, that our Jesus is real uh, and He is worthy of our praise uh, and He is worthy of our worship. Uh, we have to show them something exciting. It amazes me how folks get excited about everything but God. And heaven help you if you get excited in church a little bit. Now you can go to crossroads and they jump up and down and, and, and ab absolutely act a fool with screeching guitars and smoke and, and then they bring in a guy from California from the porn church and tell you porn's okay and people are all excited about that. The pastor gets up on the stage, cracks open a beer and said Jesus would have had a beer with him and they can, they can do all of that but we get a little excited about church people get nervous. They ought to get nervous. Heaven help us that we don't make them a little bit more nervous. We want them to feel welcome. But I didn't come out to sit on my hands. I came out to worship the Lord. If I can get excited down at Rupp Arena, Lord have mercy if I can't get excited down the house of God. I mean, all Jesus did was die for me. All he did was save me. All he did was promise me a home in heaven. Uh, all he's done is answered every prayer. He's been good to me and blessed me. What's not to get excited about? Mm. People say, Preacher, you get too excited. You should have seen me 35 years ago when I started. My mother-in-law still won't come hear me preach. I scared her to death. But anyway, it caused him to work. When you hear from heaven, it'll cause you to want to do something. Yeah. Mm. Jesus never saved you to do nothing. He saved us to serve him. If he didn't want us to do anything, Brother Michael, what he would do is after he saved us, he'd just take us to heaven. But he left us here to be his hands and his feet and be his body, be the body of Christ, so we can tell lost and dying world that Jesus saves. And we can show them how he saved us. Brother Ron, never be you know, shy about your testimony. Yeah, I know what you was, but thanks be unto God, you're not that anymore. Yeah, that's what people need to hear. You know, I was just like you. What happened? Jesus. Uh, he went to work. Notice it caused him to win his family. Hmm? It says he prepared an ark to the saving of his house. Now listen, I, I want to see everybody in the world get saved. I want to do everything I can to be an instrument. If God chooses to pull me out of his bag of instruments, dude, I can do anything for God, I want to do it. But listen, the most important thing I've seen is see my children get saved. 
Huh? I'm already praying for little Ella. She's not even here yet. Huh? I don't want to become a castaway. I don't want Ella here. Well, you should have heard your da- your papa preach. Well, he he went to church. He don't go to church anymore. I don't want her to hear that. Amen. Hmm? He not only heard the message and heeded the message, it not only caused him to work, but it caused him to win his family. Hey, Mrs. Noah didn't hear the voice of God. Noah's three children, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, they didn't hear the voice of God. How did they know about the ark and getting in the ark and doing it? They heard Noah. Noah told them. And he told them with such conviction, they believed him. The rest of the crowd thought he was nuts, but not his family. You see, they'd seen the difference God had made in his life. He not only heeded and it caused him to work and win his family, but it also caused him to witness. You know, he preached righteousness for some 120 years. Hmm. Now, nobody else got on the ark. But everybody else could have got on the ark. He invited everybody to get on the ark. He warned everybody to get on the ark. Listen, we can't save anybody, but we can tell everybody. We can show everybody. We can be a witness to everybody. We can invite everybody, but it's still their choice. We see he heard the message. We see he heeded the message, and then he became an heir. Look what it says. He went on to say that he became the heir of righteousness, which is by faith. Can I say righteousness has always been imputed by God as a result of faith? When Abraham believed, God imputed righteousness to him. When Noah believed, God imputed righteousness to him. When Moses believed, God imputed righteousness to him. When you and I believed, God imputed righteousness to him. The difference is uh, they had to wait for Jesus to die on the cross. Uh, When we believed, he'd already died on the cross, and we got robed in the righteousness of Christ. But he became an heir. I love this thought. When Noah got on the boat, it was a blessing. When he got off the boat, he owned everything. And friend, when you got on the old ship of Zion, it's a blessing. But when this thing uh, lands in port and we get off, we'll own it all. Because we've been made joint heirs to the throne of Christ. That means everything Jesus owns, we own. I don't understand that. How we, the off of the world, now will own it all. But that's what God said, and I'm going to believe it, and I say hallelujah to God. This is what I want to preach on. I, I, you know, we, there's a lot on the ark, and we could have went to Genesis 7, and we could have looked at the ark and how it was built, and we could have talked about the animals, and we could have talked about all that kind of stuff. But this is what I, I, got, I just was reading this, and I just got to thinking. You know, I think really, you know, I was an only child, so all I had to do was, you know, I didn't have nobody else to play with, so I thought a lot. And I had a vivid imagination. Playing army, you know, we somewhere the other day, I saw them little army men. Remember them little army men? They were great, and then when you got BB guns, you could shoot them. But, I mean, it, it, I never lost at Army. I could set up one on one side, and one on, I always won, you know. That's why, I, but listen, in my vivid imagination, I got to thinking about Noah being on the ark. And I want to preach for just a few minutes on being on the ark, hmm? or being in the ark been on it had been trouble but he was in it being in the ark let me just give you a few things about being in the ark can I say first of all salvation is in the ark the only ones that made it to the other side were the ones in the ark there were eight of them Noah Mrs. Noah his three sons and their wives eight of them were in the ark can I say the ark is a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ the only ones in Christ are going to the other side it's an amazing thing that when he got the ark done, that God sent in the animals, and God told Noah and uh, his family to get in the ark, and God shut the door. Uh, listen, uh, uh, Jesus is not only the ark, he's the door. Uh, and no man can open it, or no man can close it. That's all God's business. Uh, and there's coming a day, hallelujah, uh, uh, that the final one's going to get in the ark, and we're going on to glory. But did you ever think about this? Uh, hey, uh, I'm in his hand, his hand's in the fire. 
father's hand and he shut me in. Uh, what a blessing to be in the ark, uh, 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 the ark of salvation. Uh, hey, I'm glad I'm in. And what a blessing to be saved tonight. Uh, salvation's in the ark. If you're not in the ark, you're not going to the other side. Thought about this. Thought about the service in the ark. When they got on the ark, it wasn't a cruise ship like I was on a few months ago. They'd do a lot of work. Hmm? Now, if you've been down the ark, uh, you know, they, they have uh, uh, an imaginative way of trying to think of how the animals were fed and how they were watered and all kinds of stuff. The truth of the matter is nobody knows. I do wonder where they come up with Noah's uh, uh, daughters-in-law's names. The Bible don't tell us what they are. And I know the Bible said something about adding to and taking from the Word of God. I'd be real careful to put names where God didn't put names. Kind of acts like you think you're God. But anyway, that's another message for another person. Anyway. <clears throat> uh, but it makes you wonder when you look at all that stuff. It's kind of neat to think about. But whether or not you realize this, it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. And then it was another seven months for the waters to sway off the earth. They was on that ark for almost nine months. I've been to the zoo, and I've been in the elephant house. About five minutes is all I can take. Huh? You know what I'm talking about. Imagine being closed up in an ark with animals. Somebody had to feed them animals. Who did it? Noah, his sons daughters-in-laws there was a lot of service there was some work that had to be done hmm? somebody had to clean up after them animals and I don't know that they had shovels back then hmm? somebody's cleaning up after them animals hmm? that wasn't a popular job probably would have been your job because hmm? if I'm Noah I ain't doing it have at it big boy I'm taking care of the birds you got the beast you know what I'm saying huh Hey, listen, birds are the nastiest animals in the world. But anyway, uh, there's a lot of work in that. Somebody had to feed them. Somebody had to water them. Uh, hey, they had to eat for themselves. Uh, there was a lot of work keeping that ark clean and keeping it uh, where they could uh, 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 live and not live in filth. A uh, lot of service had to go on. Listen, while we're in the ark, uh, it's not time to sit down. There's a lot of service that needs to go on. Uh, uh, there's things that need to be taken care of. Uh, there are people that need to be taken care of. Uh, there are things that need to be handled. Uh, and Brother Brian, not everything's glorious. Some things are very difficult. Some things are hard. Uh, some things are not glorious. Uh, but if we're faithful in the little things, uh, there's coming a day uh, when the Lord's going to reward us with big things. Uh, hey, it doesn't matter what He asks you to do. Just do it for the glory of God. Uh, and one day you'll be glad you did. Uh, there's service in the ark. I thought about this. Did you ever think about the storms while they was in the ark? None of them had ever been on a boat. Now they're in one that's being baptized in the wrath of God. Listen. What they faced in the ark is what Jesus faced on Calvary. He was baptized in the wrath of God for you and I. The Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. Listen, it just didn't rain for 40 days and 40 nights. The deep of the earth broke up. And can I say this, this ark that they were on, it wasn't like them subs you were on. And it wasn't like some of them big ships that some of us have been on. They didn't have baffles. With every ebb and flow of the sea, one minute that ark's facing the sun. The next minute it's facing the deep. And it's up and down. Can you imagine how seasick they got? They were in a storm much more violent than anything they had ever faced or would have ever imagined. And sometimes, being in the ark, we face some violent storms. We face some things that are very uncomfortable. We face some things that go against our grain and against our nature. But listen, hallelujah, we're in the ark. Hmm? Huh? It's never pleasant being sick. It's never pleasant facing a tragedy. It's never pleasant facing hardships and storms are just a part of life they face violent storms you know my father-in-law when, when we started going on cruises he never go he didn't want to go 
See, because when he went to Vietnam, he went over on a boat. And he said it'd be so bad that they'd sit down for dinner and they'd have their plate in front of them and the waves were so bad that in any instance you're eating a fellow that's sitting six six seats down from you his meals in front of you and then uh, your meal was in front of somebody else he said it was just terrible said he was sick for months while he was on that boat he said I'm not getting on a boat I'm not getting on a cruise ship no way I'm ever getting on a boat again well we booked that first cruise and booked his little grandkids on that cruise next thing I know he booked a cruise Miss Annette prayed harder than she's ever prayed for anything. Lord, help him not to get sick, and we'll never hear the end of this thing if he gets sick on that boat. Uh, put them patches behind his ears and on that boat. He didn't even realize one day he'd washed one off in the shower. Didn't even know he'd been walking around without the thing, huh? Mm, and since then, he's booked himself on a lot of cruises we go on to. What can I say? Sometimes you're going through a lot of hardship, but thank God you're in the ark. It's the storms while you're in the ark. Then I thought about this. There are shortcomings in the ark. I don't know about you, but Noah and Mrs. Noah and his three sons and daughter-in-laws, they were human beings. I imagine being on that boat for that long, they might have got on one another's nerves. Hmm? Did you ever hang out with your family and after a while, it got on your nerves. There wasn't nowhere to run and hide. Huh? Not everything was peachy keen. Not everything was a, a Hallmark movie on this ark. There were some shortcomings. Not everybody was in a pleasant mood every day. I can hear, you know, Japheth right now. Oh, Dad, let me shovel the elephant stuff today. I, I, that sounds like fun. No, that didn't go on. Uh, he's moaning and complaining about, about the fourth month. Again? Why didn't somebody bring a cork? You know, I can hear it. Hmm? But they had a problem. Well, somebody got that. Uh, but listen, they had problems. Let me help you. Listen. You can fall down in the ark, but praise the Lord, you can't fall out of the ark. Let me say that again. You can fall down in the ark, but praise the Lord, you can't fall out of the ark. And so you may have shortcomings. There are people that stub their toe in the Christian faith. There are people that, you know, they have bad days. They fall short of the glory of God. Whether well, or not you want to be honest, we all have, even this past week. But can I say, they didn't fall out of the ark. They were still in the ark. And then I'll finish with this little thought. Being in the ark, think about the suspense in the ark. Now, they're, they're doing something they've never done before. They're on a journey they've never been on before. I mean, for 120 years, it's been a ride. I mean, they built this thing, then they got in this thing, and now this thing's come to pass what God said. Can you imagine the suspense? You say, what are you talking about? Well, first of all, there's the hesitation. They didn't know what to expect. And can I say, even in our Christian walk, there's some hesitation. Listen, I'm ready to die. But I just don't want to die right now. Okay, everybody else does. All right. Huh? Really? My name's written down in heaven. I'm ready to go to heaven. I'm just not ready to go right now. You know, I'd like to hang around and see little Ella Rose and uh, still got some things I'd like to accomplish. But, I mean, if the Lord wants to take me, I'm ready to go. Well, there's some hesitation. There's some hesitation. Sometimes there's some doubt. Are we really sailing the way God wants us to sail? Am I really doing everything God wants? I mean, there's some hesitation. There was some suspense. There was some hesitation. There was some hope. I got to thinking today could be the day we get off this thing. There's always that hope. We have a blessed hope. We know the Lord's coming back. We know everything's been fulfilled. He could come back today. There's the hope. Today could be the day. This thing's over. 
We don't have to listen to any more vulgarity. We don't have to put up with any more foolishness. We don't have to live around any more wickedness. We don't have to deal with any more of this stuff anymore. We just get to be with Christ forevermore. And then can I say there's the suspense of how much longer? Hmm? You ever go on a long trip with a child? Are we there yet? Hmm? Well, did you ever think about how much longer is the Lord going to put up with all this mess? Hmm. You know, one of the joys of being saved is we know the truth, but one of the perils of being saved is we know the truth. Yeah. You know, I can see things going on in this world, and I think, well, how come they can't see it? How come people are so blind? How anybody would ever vote for Joe Biden, I have no idea. Well, come to find out, a lot of people didn't. Unless they were dead, a lot of dead people did. But seriously, how come smart people can't see what's really going on in this world? They're blinded by the God of this world. They've been so sold out to sin for so long, they can't see what's really happening. Do you ever wonder... How much more the Lord's going to take? I met a pastor from Canada when I was in St. Lucia. And you'd think it was bad here during COVID. Canada had it a whole lot worse. Uh, you had Church of Bear, they just threw you in jail. And... I got to talking to him, and he started talking about some of the things that went on in Canada. But one of the rules were, if you had a multi-purpose building, you could keep it open and keep 10 people in a room. Well, he has a Christian school, had a gym and all that, so he petitioned, because everybody in Canada petitioned, because I'm a church, we ought to stay open, and every one of them were shot down. Well, he, he went a whole different direction. He found that provision where if you had a multi-purpose building, you could, you could stay open. So when he went before the magistrate, they knew what he was going to say because your church, well, he didn't say that. It kind of shocked them. He said, well, articles such and such said if you have a multi-purpose building, you, you could be used for the community. He said, and that's what we have, and that's what I want to be used for. He says, I want to counsel people. They said, well, we'll give you our, our decision. Well, two weeks later, he got a, a phone call and went, and, and they, they granted his request. So his building was so big that he was able to put his whole congregation, little pockets of ten throughout the building, and through the speaker system and everything, he was able to counsel them from the Scriptures and was able to continue on having service. You see how quickly our freedoms and rights and things that we've been so used to can be so abruptly taken away. And by the way, since I'm on all that, I read where this past week Fauci under oath went before somebody, some counselor or something, and admitted that he knew the truth about everything that he lied to us about. I told you, Grouchy, Fauci was the problem. You didn't believe me. Hmm? Here's, the, here's the rude awakening. Not one mainstream media outlet reported on it. That he admitted he'd lied to us and knew the facts about it all and made money on all of it. And I see all this stuff. And I wonder, how much longer, Lord? But you see, there's still folks that need to be saved. Amen. And we still have a space of grace. And the politicians may not think we're important. And the world may not think we're important. And even our families may not think we're important. But Jesus does. So even though we wonder how much longer there's a purpose for us still being in the ark, in the journey. We're being a witness to somebody. Thanks be unto God that the door's not shut. Others can still get in the ark. God help us to take what time we have.
to do as Noah did. Just believe what God says and let people know Jesus is coming and there's hope for them. And they can be saved. And they can go to glory. Because it is going to rain again. But not with water. But with fire. Peter said this earth's going to melt with a fervent heat. Mm -mm. You know, I heard this past week that it costs 15 times more to build an electric car than it does a regular car. They use 15 times more coal, 15 times more electricity, 15 times more fossil fuels and all this other stuff to build an electric car than it does a gas car. And they don't tell you that. Then they charge you a whole lot more. And you can't go as far. And all this stuff's coming to pass. And they're trying to save Mother Earth. Mother Earth's going up in flames, my dear friends. I'm just glad I'm in the ark. You ought to praise the Lord you're in the ark. You ought to praise the Lord that God made it a faith way. And he came by your way one day and let you know that you could get in the ark. You ought to praise the Lord you have an opportunity to tell somebody else to get in the ark before it's everlasting too late. I'm glad I'm in the ark tonight. Are you in the ark? Not, you can't be. If you are, you ought to praise God. Say, well, it can be hard in the ark. It's a lot harder outside the ark, trust me. And you're really going to be glad when this ark lands and you get off on the other side. Let's all stand. Maybe God spoke to your heart about somebody you need to pray for. We're going to give you that opportunity. Maybe you need to come say, God, put somebody in my heart that I can be a witness to. <coughs> Maybe you need to come and say, Lord, what can I do? What did you have me to do? It's what Paul did. All God did was use him to take the gospel all over the world. No telling what God will use you to do if you're willing to be used of God. Folks are coming. Brother Ray, come get a song. And while they're picking out a song, let's pray. Father, thank you for the ark of your safety. Thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ. He is our Savior. He's our Redeemer. He's our Rescuer. He is the one that has taken us on to glory. I'm glad I'm in Him and He's in me. Lord, we bless you for what you've done in our heart and our life. Now, God, help us, Lord, to throw out lifelines that others can get on board the old ship of Zion and find their way to safety before it's everlasting too late. Blessing this invitation. Some are already come. Break our hearts for sinners. Lord, show us what we can do for the cause of Christ. And God, get glory, and we'll thank you for it. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.